Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Greetings and welcome to another edition of the College Investor Audio Show, as we talk about something a little weird. Eh, not really. But what are option Greeks? Maybe you've heard that term. And also, how to analyze them. No, option Greeks are not gods that option traders worship. That would be weird. Options being derivatives of stocks, the Greeks explain how these derivatives move. Understanding option Greeks can help in choosing specific options and better understand the risks associated with them. For equity options, each option is based on an underlying stock or ETF. Moves in the underlying ripple into the option. The Greeks are used to describe the association between the underlying's price moves and the option's premium price moves. If you aren't sure what premium is, it's just basically the option's price. We will divide our discussion of the Greeks into three categories. Thor, I'm, I'm kidding, <laughs> price, time, and implied volatility. Those are the categories that each of the four Greeks fall into. Let's get started. Delta. Delta is a price Greek. It describes how much an option's premium will change based on a $1 price move in the underlying stock. Delta is probably the most widely watched Greek and one of the simplest to understand, which is nice. I like this one. To see how Delta works, let's look at an option that has a 50 cent price. In other words, it has 50 cents of premium. When the underlying stock increases by $1, the option's premium will increase from $0.50 cents to $1. Hmm. Delta is also used to describe the probability of an option expiring ITM, or in the money. For example, we buy the ABC July 9th, 50 call option. It has a strike of 50, and the underlying price is $49.50. This option's delta is 0.75. The delta is telling us there is a 75% chance that the underlying's price will be at or above 50 by the option's expiration July 9th. To summarize delta, it increases as the underlying stock price approaches the option's strike closer to ITM and decreases as the stock price moves away from the option's strike, further OTM or out of the money. Gamma. This is going to turn into a fraternity if we're not careful. Gamma is another price-based Greek and a second derivative. It measures the delta's rate of change. Uh, what do we mean by the second derivative? So as mentioned a little bit earlier, options are a derivative of the underlying stock. When you attach a measurement onto a derivative, you get another derivative, or a second derivative. So how does gamma work? Well, after the first $1 move in the underlying, Add delta and gamma together to find the next dollar-based move. Now let's say gamma is 0.05 or 5 cents. From the earlier delta example, after the first $1 stock move, the delta increases from 0.50 to 1.00. We can find out the next increase in premium on the next $1 underlying move by adding gamma to delta. 0.5 plus 0.05 plus 1.0 equals... 1.55. This tells us we should expect a premium of 1.55 on the second dollar move. Theta. Now we move out of price-based Greeks and into the time component, which brings us to theta. Theta measures the amount of premium an option loses with each passing day. If theta for an option is 0.02, we should expect 0 0.02 of premium to drop off each day. Using a simple example, I like simple, an option has $1 of premium. After four days, it will be worth 0 0.02 times 4, 0 0.92, if only theta affects the price. Of course, options are complex creations, as you can see by just trying to put this in a podcast. <laughs> and far more than just theta will affect an option's price. But theta certainly has an impact on the option's price, so let's take a look at that. It's really important to know that as we get closer to expiry or expiration, the option's premium will decrease or decay quicker. 
During the last 30 days leading up to expiry, Theta kicks into overdrive as the options premium decays fastest during this period. So time decay works against option buyers and for option sellers. Traders who buy calls or puts need the underlying to go above the call strike or below the put strike before expiry. Otherwise, the option will expire worthless. For option sellers, time isn't a concern. Just as long as the underlying does not violate their strike, they'll collect the full premium. When an option buyer's premium goes to zero at ex expiration, or it expires worthless, where did the premium actually go? In some cases, it went to the option seller. Remember, the underlying never went through the option's strike, exactly what the option seller wanted. Vega Vega is a volatility-based derivative measurement. It measures implied volatility, or IV. Specifically, how much premium changes with each 1% move is implied volatility. As an example, prem equals 1.00, vega equals 0.05. So, if IV decreases by 1%, the premium will drop to 1.00 minus 0.05 equals 0.95. Options with a longer expiry have a higher vega. For example, an option with 45 days remaining before expiry will have a higher vega than one with only 10 days until expiry. Let's bring it all together, or at least try, shall we? So how does someone make use of these option Greeks? Well, as we mentioned a little bit earlier in the podcast, if you're doing hand calculations or maybe just eyeballing the Greeks, Delta is probably the one you're most interested in. That doesn't mean the others aren't useful, but with options being a purely mathematical creation, the Greeks are best used in models. Models are able to crunch numbers quickly and spit out option price ranges for particular dates, meaning you can get probabilities of where the option price may be on particular dates. Oh, but we're not done yet, because we have to talk about Rho, Charm, and Vanna. There are a few other odd names to mention here and then one more Greek. Rho is an option Greek but is less mentioned when talking about option Greeks. Poor thing. Rho is tied to a 1% move in interest rates. As you can imagine, interest rates don't really move that often unless you have a long dated option. Rho simply doesn't apply. Sorry, Rho. <laughs> Delta hedging is another option concept and I only mention it because it may become confused with the Delta Greek. However, that isn't exactly what Delta hedging is. Dealers use Delta hedging to hedge their order book. They'll use Delta to determine if their book is neutral. A quick example, a dealer that has long 10 instruments with a Delta of 0 0.70 and short 10 with a Delta of minus 0 0.6 is long by 0 0.10 Delta, so this dealer will likely look to short more, bringing their delta to zero. When a dealer shorts calls, they must buy the equivalent delta in stock, so they are delta hedged. The mechanics behind this use more strange names called Vanna and Charm. Vanna is volatility exposure, and Charm is time exposure. Taken together, the result produced for dealers is called gamma exposure. Positive gamma can see a market that moves little. Negative gamma results in a market that can have wide swings. That is just the summary of delta hedging, as when you're listening to a podcast, and if we actually got in deep with this thing, my mind would implode. Oh, and there are also option miners. We're not going to discuss them here, and they're rarely mentioned when discussing the Greeks. Their names are Lambda, Epsilon, Vama, Vera, Speed, Zama, Color, and Ultima. The minor Greeks get into the derivative of the derivative of the derivative type stuff. This is Greek to me. If you followed that, it means second and third derivatives. <laughs> At some point, the higher level derivatives become useless to humans, as we can't really perceive their results. It's just all models from there. I will say this, though. Understanding the option Greeks is great for quants that use models and AI to help them make decisions. But that doesn't mean that humans can't actually use them for some quick decision-making, which is what Delta can provide. 
and go back to the earlier in the podcast and we just focused on Delta, that can be something that could be useful. Okay, so after all of that and learning a little bit of Greek along the way, if you want to actually read this article, it might be a little bit easier to follow along. You can find it at thecollegeinvestor.com and dig a little deeper into this. It is actually a lot of fun and pretty interesting. Just type in the words, what are options Greeks? And you'll find it. 